with a really great Tashkoch of practice. One of the longest, if not the longest, the most involved Torah of the, of the whole Ketzer Shem. Next, Korach to Chukas, which is exactly where we're holding right now. So obviously this was composed with us in mind, which we're not going to be here so many, uh, few hundred years later, and be here just between, you know, that there are people here from Chutz that are reading Korach, and people here from Eretz Yisrael that are reading Chukas. So Baal Shem Tov and the, and the, uh, the author, or the compiler of this, of this book, Ketar Shem Tov, has a, a special Torah which is based on a medrash that the medrash is not even known, so it means that the Baal Shem Tov even found a special medrash for our purposes in order to uh, to connect Korach to Chukas. So actually, it's uh, it's about the secret of the Parah Adum, and of the, the topic, the first uh, basic topic of Chukas is the red, red Hebrew. The ashes of which represent the ultimate paradox, and it's the ultimate chok of the Torah Chuka, which means a law that's in, uh, impossible to, to fathom, to understand, because it has two opposites to it. Anything which is two opposites simultaneously is a paradox. And the paradox about the Parah Duma is that at the same time, in the same substance, if, if you're impure, so it purifies you. If a person has come in contact with uh, death, so it is a purifying agent. Whereas, if you're pure, the very same substance profanes you, impurifies you. So how can it be that the identical substance both causes purity, brings purity to an impure soul and brings impurity to a pure soul? So that's something that, that our, that our uh, human limited, finite mind cannot understand. So that's why this is called the ultimate paradox of the Torah. So everything that we were speaking of uh, yesterday and the day before about the Siyat HaVachim, paradoxes, reaches its high point in the whole Torah in Parashat Chukat, Paradumah. Now, it begins, this piece, with a quotation from the, from the Medrash. But it's a Medrash that nobody knows where it's from. It just equals the Medrash. And the Medrash says, Ma ro kerak lak leka meshe, What did Korach see, envision? What did he have in mind that that brought him to to make a machlekes with Meshur Rabbein. That's the beginning of Parshas Kolach. So, whoever remembers Rashi, Rashi also quotes from a very well-known Medrash, and he brings it that Shuta Shumikro that Kolach saw, what he saw means he, he thought, or he, he had in mind the topic which was the end of the previous portion. At the end of the previous portion was Tzitzis, was Parshas Tzitzis. That you have a beggar and you have to, you have to, uh, there's four corners to it, you have to put on tzitzis. And uh, in the tzitzis there has to be one thread, each one of the corners, one thread of tchelis. Of uh, dark blue tchelis. So Korach, thinking or taking that in mind, that, uh, that halakha, which was the, the last halakha just before, the beginning of Korach. He brought all of his 250 people that he had, uh, that he was much pure and had influence to, uh, to join together with him to, to disagree and, and try to usurp the power of Moshe Rabbeinu. And he dressed them all with uh, four cornered garments that were all traded, that was all blue. And then he said, he asked Moshe Rabbeinu, do we have to put on tzitzis on these garments? And Moshe Rabbeinu said, yes. 
it's, it doesn't matter what what color or what the fabric the the bag is itself. You had the, the Torah says if you have a four corner of the garment, it doesn't matter what it's made out of. You have to put on tzitzis, and the tzitzis has one thread, and each tzitzis one thread of tzitzis. So they started to laugh and to mock. But well, machlokas always have to do with mockery. There's something we didn't actually discuss too much at length. But uh, when you uh, a person that that uh, we're talking about the accusation, of accusing Moshe Rabbeinu, each of all kinds of other accusations. But uh, but the accusation actually, what it, what it boils down to then is mockery. It's mockery. It's laughing at you. And the mockery was they said that if if uh, if you have a Another baguette that say made out of a white uh, linen or something, or wool, one thread of of tchelis is good enough to leave to 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 make it wearable according to Torah. This that uh, baguette. If I have a baguette, a, a garment that's a hundred percent tchelis, so what do I need? What do I need another string? I, that's that's a pshat. There's another thing also in the matters. These these. These uh, medrashim are both quoted by Rashi and also in Hasidus discussed at length. What, what is the idea behind that? But the idea behind that is that we, we the Jewish people, are all one great baggage of tzedek. We don't need. There's no, no special people. We're all we're all great and we're all equal. Because this this false version of uh, democracy that God had in mind. That really he was trying to become the leader of this. Uh, of this equality of uh, of Jews as he uh, as he envisioned it. In any event, that's what that's the normal metrish. Again, Chazal will always ask why something appears in the Torah in the, the moment that it appears. It's one of the great Hashkoch parties that everything happens in its proper time. So if Korach disagreed with Moshe Rabbeinu appointing Aaron to be the high priest and appointing someone else to be the, the head of his family or of his tribe, as Rashi explains, he could have, that, that Makhluk, it could have appeared before in the, in the order of the Torah. So the order of the Torah is a very significant uh, phenomenon. And if it appears just at this point, it means that this is the moment that the, that the Makhluk really took place, even though the, the potential for it was there before, or the shot content of the Makhluk it was, was applicable before. So why did it appear right now? You say that something sparked, or some catalyst, or some catalyst that happened that sparked the manifestation of the the breakout of the fire of the of the machloket. So you look in the Torah and you see what is the order of the Torah. There you learn what what uh, what sparked the machloket. So he says what sparked the machloket, even though the content is is appointing your family and friends to be the, the leaders, but the but uh, he said that it, it was sparked by by this uh, by the last law. So now here the Balshemto brings a quote to Medrash that says uh, it says this same idea. Why does it appear here? But he, it says a very amazing thing. It says that he, he wasn't looking at the end of the previous Balsham. He was looking at the beginning of the of the of the coming Balsham. Because focus follows, and the Parah Tumah is something that, that Moshe Rabbeinu had, had not yet explicitly said. It's going to be next week's Parsha. Just again, with Rimez Hashko Parties, we have both Parshas identically at the same time right here. Because we have souls from Chutzorot and souls from Eretz Yisrael at the very same time. But the Pshat, once more, is that he looked ahead in the Torah. So the fact that this medrash doesn't is not uh, found, just that fact in itself is uh, it makes it very uh, understandable why, why this is such a a, uh, a way out medrash. Because usually you don't you don't base something. So what sparks you is not something that's going to be said because you don't even.